We are live uh, for Pop Dust Presents today with Evangelia. How are you? I'm well. How are you doing today? Thank you for having me. Absolutely. We are doing good. How was your holiday? My holiday was lovely. We spent it. It was a, it was a Friendsgiving. I couldn't go home to the East Coast to be with my family, but we have a couple close friends we actually write music with that have become our family and our little pod. So we did Thanksgiving, like the turkey and all the fixins, And we even actually got a Thanksgiving pinata. A Thanksgiving pinata? A new tradition that we just started this year. <laughs> I think that's a great tradition. But you have to say what you're grateful for before you whack it. Yeah, that's a good way to get people to, to say it. Right? Is it like a birthday wish where like if you say it, it won't come true? I think it actually works the opposite. The more you say what you're grateful for and put it out in the universe, the more things to be grateful for you'll get. (laughs) What are some of the things that you are grateful for uh, this year? We know you have some new music out recently. I'm so grateful that I've been able to release music this year. It's been the weirdest year ever. And to be a new artist on this landscape has definitely been tricky and interesting. My music is out there and it's reaching new people and I get to speak with people like you. So I'm really, really grateful. So the latest single was Fotia, am I pronouncing it right? Fotia. And what does that, so that's Greek, correct? So Fotia means fire in Greek. That beat is Fotia. Yeah, that means fire, let's go, Fotia. (laughs) The last single before this was a Pame Pame? Yes. And what does that translate to? That means let's go, let's go. I love the I love the production on that one. Um, do you say you actually work with your boyfriend on the music? Yeah, yeah my boyfriend Stolar, he's an incredible songwriter and producer. And we fell in love before we started making music together. In the beginning, we were like, we shouldn't do this, but we just couldn't help but be creative and, and create and then we kind of both came together with this crazy idea to blend my Greek roots with like the pop music that I love and make something that's really true to me and authentic. And so we got a buzuki, which is a traditional Greek instrument. And Jay learned how to play it. And we, Jay, he, Jay Stolar, he goes by Stolar. I call him Jay. So sometimes it gets confusing. That's, a, that's beautiful. And, and Stolar, how did, how did he learn to play this traditional Greek instrument? He is an amazing guitar player and piano player and is avid with all sorts of instruments. So the buzuki is actually pretty close to a guitar. So he was able to figure it out. And then also he's Jewish. And so a lot of actually the Jewish melodies and traditional old old Orthodox Jewish melodies are very similar and rooted in the Mediterranean and to similar melodies that are in Greek music and traditional Greek music. So we always joke around that he's always been preparing for this his whole life. So it actually came to him pretty naturally. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, yeah. And and I, I read on the internet, so you know that it's true, that you were actually born and raised in Greece? I was not born in Greece. I was born in New Jersey, but I went to Greece a month later and I met my whole dad's side of the family. My dad's straight off the boat born on an island in Greece, came to America. My mom was born in the US, Jersey Italian girl. Yeah, the Greek culture was very, very strong um, in my life and my whole dad's side of the family was there. So then basically after going there, after being a month old and meeting everybody every single year of my life after that, except for this one because of the pandemic, um, I've gone and spent like two to three months in Greece during the summers and I would live on a farm with my grandmother and it was often just us. That sounds incredible. Where where were you born in Jersey? I was born in New Brunswick, New Jersey. Okay. I'm I'm actually from Jersey. In my hometown, there is a Greek festival every year. <laughs> and it was like it was yes. like the thing. I mean, how could it not be? The Greek festival, ours was in Piscataway, New Jersey. I went to St. George and I was did you ever have the Lukumadis? Do you remember like the honey donuts? Oh, absolutely so much fun so you've been exposed they probably had some greek music some greek dancing so do you think it'll be a tradition for you to always use uh greek song titles so not necessarily always greek song titles it just kind of worked out for these two songs but definitely going to continue the exploration and incorporation of traditional greek elements whatever they may be so 
it might not always have a Greek word, might not always have a Greek phrase, but there'll be an instrument or vice versa. I like really love playing with um, combining my cultures. I love that. Like, taking stuff from, you know, where you grew up uh, and able to combine it with pop music, kind of giving it like a really, a very uh, interesting and like a uh, unique flavor to it that's authentic to you. So yep. that's pretty dope. Thanks. You just like automatically therefore get a good amount of love from uh, from fans in Greece. So I definitely got a lot, of, a lot of love from fans in Greece and my family's definitely really proud and excited. And I think, you know, what, um, what I'm doing hasn't really been done before in this way and in this scale. So in, also in general, I think Greek people, like when a Greek person meets another Greek person, we're just like, oh my God, hello, cousin, family member. Like you are immediately just proud to to know the person and so I think a lot of people in whether they live in Greece or are Greek and live all around the world are really excited to see somebody kind of going in the mainstream pop world like proudly incorporating traditional Greek music and and language because you don't really hear that ever so I've been really really excited and honestly like really proud to do it. And how is the the Greek community here in LA? Or are you not sure because we both ended up here during uh, quarantine times? Yeah, I. Uh, it's such a bummer that there's a pandemic and I can't fully, you know, really get to know the Greek community, at least in person. But I have connected with some people online. And before the whole world shut down, I did actually attend the, the uh, Greek festival at, um, I think it's, Hagia Sophia, like St. Sophia Cathedral. It's like a big Greek Orthodox church. It was so much fun. And honestly, the priest there was so fun. He was like getting up and singing with the band and I got to Greek dance and I got to eat all my favorite food. So I was so happy that a Greek Orthodox community and just Greek community exists here. So I look forward to connecting with them when we can. Who are some of your like top musical influences just pop music in general i listen to so much and i don't discriminate i really listen to like everything that's going on like new music friday i'll listen to every single thing my early influences that really inspired me to want to make music even before i had this you know crazy um idea for the music that i make today was listening to people like Ray Charles um, and anybody that had soul and would sing and like you could feel that they really mean mean what they're saying. And then I remember in high school, I actually was obsessed with Ingrid Michaelson um, and that first album that she had where it was like super simple and it was just her singing and a ukulele. I think it was the song You and I. And I was like, wait, it's just her and a ukulele. Like I can write songs too. And that's kind of what started it all for me so I really came from a like acoustic singer songwriter background and you know playing guitar in my dorm room and doing open mic nights and everything but you know growing up on the east coast and I went to Rutgers going into New York City being exposed to so many different cultures and listening to all types of music and in in the pop world and then of course you know, growing up listening to really traditional Greek music that is just as familiar to me as everything on New Music Friday. So now what you have is me taking both of those and like blending them together to create what I make. What is the, what is the best traditional Greek bop? To Agalma, which means the statue. And it's a Zebekiko song, which it's kind of like, have you heard of the drunken sailor dance by any chance in regards to like Greek people? And they just like put their hands up and people are clapping around in a circle and there's one person in the middle just like dancing and they're usually drunk. I don't know that I've heard <laughs> about that specifically, but it sounds like a dope time. It's a great time and people are just clapping and cheering you on and you're just like in your zone and in your moment feeling the song. When this song comes on, it just makes me want to get up and dance. And it's basically, 
it translates to this person got broken up with and the only person who will listen is the statue in the plaza. And so he tells all his problems to this statue. Kind of sad. It is really sad. It's very passionate. That's the thing. It's very passionate. Do you think I, do you think Jay can can sample that? Is it public domain at this point? Can you do it royalty free? I definitely thought about it. And EBD, we will check in. <laughs> Absolutely. That would be a pop dust exclusive, people. You heard it here yes. first. Yes, exactly. The the latest singles, Fotia. And nice. Pame Pame. Um, <laughs> I can't even look directly at you in the camera while they say that stuff. <laughs> like, um, are, are they going to be part of like a, a larger upcoming project where you kind of putting singles out there, feeling it out? What are the 2021 plans? If you have any, I don't even know what I'm doing tomorrow. We have plans for some really awesome singles that I've been sitting on for a while and I'm so excited to release. Some of them might have a feature that I can't say yet. Um, there's, a lot, there's a lot to look forward to, but you can definitely look forward to some collaborations, a couple features and songs that I'm really, really proud of and so excited to get out there. And you can't tell me who the feature is? No. Is I it me? Not. Is this like a huge surprise for me? Oh my <laughs> God. Are you so excited? <laughs> I can't believe it. Sure, you could say Fotia and Bame Bame. And now that you can, I I bestow upon you, you are, you're the feature. <laughs> this is the proudest moment of my life. I, I haven't prepared anything. I haven't written any lyrics. You're in West Hollywood, right? We'll meet at a distance. We'll practice yes. outdoors. Yeah. And we premiere and on Pop Dust. Just across the street from each other, just yelling song ideas. Exactly. That's what people want. That's what our community needs yes okay do we get any hints about the about the next single to drop do you know approximately when by end of january uh january 30th is my birthday so oh my, this is, oh my is this like a surprise birthday party There's, where i'm the feature on the song is are you gonna sample is jay gonna sample this interview because i got bars maybe. okay all right I'm, I'm ready <laughs> you're like bummer bummer <laughs> exactly I know it's difficult to record like music videos and stuff right now, but are there any visuals people should expect? We have not shot them yet, but the plan is to have visuals for every song. So there are definitely visuals for people to expect. And what I would say is in the meantime, watch the visuals for the last two songs. The first song I actually shot completely in Greece and it was summer 2019. Little did I know that that would be like the last time before the end of the world that I would be able to go there. And I actually shot it in my grandmother's farmhouse where I grew up and I threw a party in the village where I grew up in it. So it's all like real people and a real party. So if you feel like you need to escape and go to Greece for like two and a half minutes, watch the Bame Bame music video and you'll escape for a little bit. And then the Fotia video, I'm so proud of. It was my first time doing choreography for real and we shot it in a studio here in LA and it was all under safe COVID protocols everybody was wearing a mask except for you know me performing and um, I'm just really proud of what we made and I'm so excited to make more. That's awesome and I definitely want to go to Greece it looks amazing on Instagram. It is I mean it's such a beautiful place like it's just amazing and I really miss it. Well, hopefully you'll get to, to go back there soon. And maybe next year you'll be smashing apart a Thanksgiving pinata in Greece. Who knows? Greece. No. Do, they, do, they, do they do Thanksgiving there? I mean, it is a technically an American holiday. Maybe maybe I can start it. I say, yeah, bring the pinata and be <laughs> like, what's up? It's Thanksgiving. And it always feels good to talk about what you're grateful for. It shouldn't be just a Thanksgiving thing. It should be an everyday thing. We need a weekly pinata. Weekly pinata. Oh my god. <laughs> this is a new thing. Hashtag weekly pinata. Uh sound off in the comments below oh, what you're, you're thankful for. <laughs> Thank you so much for spending time with us today. Um everybody should check out the latest single, Fotia. I'm hoping I'm doing that right. Uh yeah. it's really fun. I, I love the music. It sounds really great. So congrats to all of that. And when uh, when you release your next single on my birthday, January 30th, um, that I guess awesome. that I'm featured in, 
yeah, I guess we have to do another session. So yeah, we'll plan yeah. something for around then. Awesome. Right. Thanks so much for having me. Absolutely. Was- Thank you.